Good evening, everyone. Our readings this evening are from Psalms 70 and 71. The Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10 through chapter 10, verse 4, and the Gospel, Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. O God, make speed to save us. Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you as they make known the glory of your kingdom. <clears throat> Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now, as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness in our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom, where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We pray, Lord, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. And as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise for ever and ever. Amen. And we read Psalm 70. O God, make speed to save me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion. Let them be turned back and disgraced who wish me evil. Let those who mock and deride me turn back because of their shame. Come to me quickly, O God. But let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say always, Great is the Lord. As for me... I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. And a brief prayer. O God, our help and defender, deliver us in our weakness, answer our longings and vindicate our faith that we may see your glory in Jesus Christ our Lord. And Psalm 71 in you, O Lord, do I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send out to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence, even in my youth. Upon you I have lent from my birth. When you drew me from my mother's womb, my praise shall always be to you. O God, be not far from me. I have become important to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise for your glory all day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him because there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O God. Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. O God, be, be not far from me. But as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all day long for I know no end of the tearing. I will begin with mighty works of the Lord God, and I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O God, be not far from me. 
O God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O God, when I am old and grey-headed. Your righteousness, O God, reaches uh, to the heavens. In the great things you have done, who is like you, O God? What troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you will turn and refresh me and bring me from the deep of the earth again. Increase my honour, turn again and comfort me. O God, be not far from me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the harp for your faithfulness, O God. I will sing to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing out as I play to you, and so will my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also will tell of your righteousness all day long, for they shall be shamed and disgraced who sought to do me evil. Faithful Lord, living Saviour, in youth and old age, from the womb to the grave, May we know your protection and proclaim your great salvation to the glory of God the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 to chapter 10 verse 4. The Lord sent a word against Jacob, and it fell on Israel. And all the people knew it, Ephraim and, its in and the inhabitants of Samaria. But in pride and arrogance of heart they said, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. So the Lord raised adversaries against them and stirred up their enemies, the Arameans in the east and the Philistines in the west, and they devoured Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger has not turned away. His hand is stretched out still. The people did not turn to him <coughs> who struck them or seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail. Palm branch and reed in one day. Elders and dignitaries are the head, and prophets who teach lies are the tail. For those who led his people uh, led them astray, and those who were led by them were left in confusion. That is why the Lord did not have pity on their young people, or compassion on their orphans and widows. For everyone was godless, and an evildoer, and every mouth spoke folly. For all this his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burned like a fire, consuming briars and thorns, it kindled the thickets of the forest, and they swirled upwards in a column of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts the land was burnt, and the people became like fuel for the fire. No one spared another, they gorged on the right, but were still hungry. They devoured on the left, but were not satisfied. They devoured the flesh of their own kindred. Manasseh devoured Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh, and together they were against Judah. For all of this his anger was has turned not away, and his hand is stretched out still. I, ah, uh, you make iniquitous decrees and write oppressive statutes to turn aside the needy from justice and to rob the poor of my people from their right. The widows may be your spoil, and that you may make the orphans your prey. What will you do on the day of punishment, in the calamity that will come from far away? To whom will you flee for help, and where will you leave your wealth, so as not to crouch among the prisoners, or fall among the slain? For all this, his anger has not turned away. <coughs> His hand is stretched out still. Hear the word of the Lord. And we read the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his humble servant. From this day 
All generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has set mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He's filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. And our New Testament reading is from the Gospel to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> Do not judge, so that you may not be judged, for with judgment, for with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your neighbor, let me take that speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. And do not give what is holy to dogs. And do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you, if your child asks for bread, will you give him a stone? Or if your child asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you, then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Hear the word of the Lord. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As we've just read, in everything do to others as you would have them do to you. For well, this is the law and the prophets. This verse is described as the most important in the Sermon on the Mount, and for that matter, most universally known of Jesus' teaching. William Barclay describes it as the capstone of the whole discourse, or the Everest of teachings on social ethics. This is one teaching of Jesus that, that one teaching of Jesus that did not, in the positive expression, have a, any rabbinic parallel. It's quite new, a new view of life and of Earth's obligations. So let's have a look at the earlier verses in the Gospel reading in the light of this. Jesus teaches us to ask, and it will be given. Seek, and we will find, and to knock, and the door will be opened to us. We want to know the kind of God who to whom we are praying. Is he a grudging God? Is he a mocking God? Or is he a God whose love for us is so great that he's more than ready to give us more than we uh, can ever think of asking? He backs up the statement with examples. What father is there who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Or for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. We will give good things to our children. We can expect even better gifts from our Heavenly Father. Our nature is to do to our family as we would like them to do to us. But we need to be in relationship with Him 
so that we can put our pleasures, thanks and needs and problems to him. There are of course examples in the Bible of God answering prayers of people who have no effective relationship with him. But he wants us to be in relationship with him far more than we seem to want to be in relationship with God. I sometimes think he must be disappointed in us. We tend to go on our own merry way without giving God much thought in our day-to-day -day lives. If one of our friends treats us like this, we feel hurt. It's not nice to feel sidelined by a friend. And yet God is forgiving and wants to develop and maintain his relationship with us. In the same vein, we're told not to be judgmental. Being judgmental immediately causes friction between the judge and the judged. This is enough to destroy any relationship that there might have been. God, our Heavenly Father, does not treat us like that. We may feel judged when we have gone against one of the biblical guidelines or the commandments, but that, I think, tends to come from us recognizing that we have done wrong, rather than directly from God. So God treats us in precisely the way that he tells us to treat others, in accordance with the law and the prophets. We say the baptismal creed together. I believe and trust in God the Father, who made the world. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, <coughs> who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for all that's gone through today. We praise you for your loving uh, presence with us. We ask you to give us grace to follow your example. And we pray for peace in this land. We pray that you will be able to guide all our leaders in the decisions they make and that they will make them in accordance with your will, your treating others as they would be treated themselves. We pray for those who are sick. We pray that your healing hand will be on them. We pray for those looking after the sick, that you will guide them and protect them from infection, from uh, diseases that they're dealing with. And we pray, Lord, that people will hear and believe will have the opportunity to hear your word and that they will accept it and believe it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Today's collect. God, the ruler of all who called your servant Wilfred <coughs> to an earthly throne we, and gave him zeal for your church and love for your people, that he might advance your heavenly kingdom, mercifully grant that we who commemorate his example may be fruitful in good works and attain to the glorious crown of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And may the Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, 
bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.